everyone, it's Kelly Marie Alvarez here from Lawn Fawn for Simon Says Stamp. Today we are introducing our brand new interactive die pivot pop-up and this die is so awesome because this is what it does. I just love it so much. So it looks like a normal card on the front and then wow, there's this huge surprise. The other thing I wanted to tell you guys is how we came up with the name Pivot Pop-Up. So do you guys remember that Friends episode where Ross buys the couch that's too big to get up the stairs and he keeps yelling, Pivot! Pivot! Anyways, that's what we named it after and now every time I play one of these I think of that episode and it makes me smile. So these are all of the pieces that the die comes with. That is the main mechanism there. Then over here we've got our panel pieces, which you're gonna die cut two of them. We've got little grass or hill pieces there, and then some fun little extra add-ons with some trees and some clouds to help you set the scene. So this is that main mechanism, and we have some score lines here, a horizontal and two diagonal. There's two little embossed lines right there. That's to tell you where to put the adhesive later on, so I'll show you guys that in just a little bit. Those little notches there are also to help you line up the whole thing, and we'll look at that later too. So here is that mechanism, and you're gonna fold away from yourself along that horizontal line, creating a mountain type shape. Then you're gonna open it back up, and you're gonna fold along those diagonal lines towards yourself. So I'm gonna fold this way, kind of push that down and get a nice crease, and then I'm gonna fold the other diagonal line towards myself again. So now I've got all of my pieces folded. Next, we're gonna take our index fingers and we're gonna put them behind the mechanism pushing in to create this arrow shape. So I'm gonna repeat that one more time. So I'm gonna take my index fingers, I'm gonna push in from the back, just like that, and I'm gonna create this cool little arrow shape. And now our mechanism is all formed. I'm creating a standard size portrait card base, but you can use a landscape card base and you can change up the sizes too. But in this case, we're gonna do a portrait card just to try it out. Next up, I am going to add some adhesive to my mechanism. So I'm gonna keep it in that arrow shape and I'm gonna add adhesive to the triangle there on the top of that arrow. And I'm using some nice strong tape so that my mechanism sticks really well. I'm gonna flip over my little mechanism and I'm gonna add tape to the other side of that triangle as well. Next, we're gonna open that mechanism back up again, and you're gonna see that there's a little hole in the center. And this is your little viewfinder to make sure that you're centering it right along the score line of your card. So you're gonna look through that little hole there and you're gonna find the score line. So here you're gonna see it in close up. Oh, there's my score line. Now I know I have it perfectly in the center. Now I'm going to peel off my liner paper on one of those triangles, and it's gonna be my top triangle. I'm gonna flip it over, and then I'm gonna look through my viewfinder to find that center line again. And so you'll see there I've found it. And then now I can go ahead and push down on that top arrow to make sure that adhesive stays nice and securely in place. Then I'm gonna do that motion where I push in from the back again to create that arrow shape. So once again, I'm just gonna kind of push in, create that arrow shape again, and then we're gonna remove that liner tape to expose that adhesive. Then I'm just gonna close my card shut and push down really well to pick up that adhesive. And now our mechanism is inside of our card base and you can see how cool that motion that it makes is. Now it's time to take out those panel pieces. So I've die cut two of those pieces and I'm gonna fold towards myself and then away from myself. So towards myself on that score line and then away from myself on that score line. Then I'm gonna add some more of that nice strong tape to those little tabs that we just folded. Now I'm gonna take one of those panels and flip it over. So I'm gonna repeat that one more time. I'm gonna take one of those panels and flip it over and now you're kinda of seeing how they're gonna fit into each other to create one long piece. So I'm peeling up that liner tape and then I'm gonna go ahead and fit them in together, making sure the tabs are along the back, fit them in together as well as possible and you'll see that it's gonna look like it was always one long piece, which is really awesome. Then I'm gonna go ahead and push in, creating kind of an accordion shape because that's how this panel piece is gonna fold. Now we have some cool little hills that are included in the set and they have little score lines as well, right in the right position there, right in the center. So I'm gonna fold those and then put a ton of adhesive along the back and then I can go ahead and line that up with the bottom of my scene. And so you could put these in green for grass, white for snow, blue for ocean. So you could have a lot of fun with these cool little hill shapes or you could do a panel without the hills too. 
Once that hill is on, then I'm gonna go ahead and push it in again into that accordion shape. And then I'm gonna start working on to my card base again. So remember those little embossed lines I showed you at the very beginning? That's gonna tell us where to put our adhesive. And it's just a nice little marker so that you know. And then those are gonna tell us where to line up our panel. So I'm gonna put that adhesive there on those two pieces, making sure that I don't go past that little embossed line there that's kind of giving me my nice guide. And then I'm gonna peel up that liner tape. Now I'm gonna take my panel, and that center part of the panel is gonna line up with that tiny little notch. And you'll see that you kinda of have to put your head right over it like I just did. Line it up and push down. Next, we're gonna push in and kind of guide that mechanism in with your fingers, because the first time you kinda of have to tell the paper what to do. Then we're gonna push down really, really well, making sure we get nice creases on all of those die cuts, and we're gonna open it up, and you're seeing how cool it is already. So right there, we're gonna push down, and then we're gonna go ahead and open it up. And it's just so cool. Now, one thing about this die is you wanna open it and close it, open and close it, push down again, keep playing with it. And you wanna kinda of play with it about 10 times or so. And the more you play with it, the better it opens. So now you can see it's opening perfectly, which is so cool. So now it's time to make a card with this die, and this time we're gonna make a landscape card. So this is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. We're gonna fold that in half, and then we're gonna open it up, and we're gonna decorate the inside before we put the mechanism in there. So I'm taking some perfectly plaid spring paper in the daffodil color. I love this yellow, it's so happy. And I'm gonna line both the top and the bottom of my card with this cute paper. Then I'm gonna take my mechanism here and I'm gonna fold it in half there away from myself down that middle line and then fold it towards myself on those diagonal lines, just like that. Then I'm gonna take my index fingers and I'm gonna push in and create that cool arrow shape. Then I'm gonna take my nice strong tape and I'm gonna add tape to the triangles on both sides of this arrow. I'm gonna pull up that liner paper there on one of those triangles exposing the adhesive. I'm gonna open up my mechanism and then use that little circle there, that little viewfinder to find the score line of my card to make sure that my mechanism is right in the center. And once I've found that, I can go ahead and push on that top triangle, securing that mechanism down. Then I'm gonna push in, creating that little arrow shape again, and then I'm gonna peel off the liner tape of the other triangle, and then I'm gonna close the card shut onto that triangle then putting the mechanism into the center of my card. Now it's time to decorate our panels. And I was in an ink blending mood today, so I'm taking out my inks and my foam ink blending tool, but this card would be even easier and quicker to make if I had used some colored cardstock or pattern papers. But I was feeling the ink blending, so I'm taking my ink blending tool there, starting off the paper and going on just building up that color. Then the Mermian ink, which is slightly darker, I'll put on at the very end just to make the bottom a little bit darker to give that kind of gradient effect to my sky. I'm repeating the same idea with celery stick ink and then freshly cut grass ink for my grass. So I'm gonna build up that celery stick ink color and then I'm gonna add that freshly cut grass along the bottom there just to darken it up a little bit. So here I have my Beam Me Up and Rub-A-Dub-Dub -dub stamp sets, and I'm gonna stamp out some images from these sets and then add a little color to them and die cut them. So the little flag from that alien stamp set, the little duck's gonna hold it, and then she's gonna have all her little baby ducks following her. I'm gonna die cut that cardstock that I inked earlier with my panel die. So I'm gonna die cut my first panel, and then I'm gonna take that die and flip it around, because that's how we're gonna put the pieces together later on. And I'm gonna hold that in place with some low tack tape and then run that through my die cut machine. And that way the pieces are gonna match with the gradient kind of darker on the bottom and lighter on the top. Then here I'm gonna take my little grass hill pieces and line those up with that piece that I die cut and then die cut those two pieces too. Now the next thing I'm gonna do before I fold anything or anything is stamp my sentiment. So I'm stamping, I'm a lucky duck to have you as my mom, which is such a sweet sentiment. I'm gonna stamp that first and then I'm gonna fold. So I'm gonna fold towards myself and then away from myself and then I'm gonna take that tab away from myself and then fold that longer score line there towards myself. I've added some score tape to those two tabs. I'm gonna peel up that liner tape and then I'm gonna take my two panel pieces and put them together to create my one long panel. Next, I'm going to add some adhesive to my little green hills and then add those along the bottom of this nice long panel piece. Then I'm gonna push in towards the center, creating my little accordion fold there. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and decorate the panel. I like to decorate the whole panel first and then add it to my card because I find it easier to just work with this little panel piece before it's attached to the whole pop-up mechanism. And so I'm just gonna add my little ducks on there and I'm making sure not to use any foam dots because we don't want any kind of bulk on the inside because we want it to be able to fold as flat as possible. I'm going to add my tape there to the ends of my mechanism. Then I can peel off that liner tape and I'm gonna take my whole panel piece and line it up with the center of my mechanism. And then I'm gonna push down. And then once again, we're gonna guide that piece. So the first one, you're gonna kinda of guide it with your fingers. You're gonna press down and you're gonna just let it kinda of crease really nicely. And then you're gonna open it up and you're gonna see that cool mechanism working. I went ahead and played with the mechanism a couple more times and now it's working really, really well. So I wanted to have a little place to write my message. So I die cut a white little outside in stitch scalloped rectangle there and I'm just gonna layer that on the inside. And then I want the outside to match my inside. So I'm gonna take a stitch till side border there and die cut that same shape of rectangle die. And I'm gonna add my ink just like I did to my other pieces. Then I'm gonna layer those two pieces there to kind of mimic the inside of the card. Next, I'm using a stitched border die to add a little stitched detail to the top and the bottom of a little piece of white cardstock. Then I'm gonna stamp Happy Mother's Day from the Happy, Happy, Happy stamp set. And then I can go ahead and add my cute little ducks. So I'm using the same four ducks that are on the inside of the card, but I'm letting the mama duck be a surprise on the inside of the card. I'm adding the cute cloud dies there that are included in the Pivot Pop-Up stamp set. And then I can go ahead and decorate this whole thing. So I'm using the same pattern paper that's on the inside. I'm gonna put that on the outside. I'm gonna take that white panel that we added that stitching detail to, and I'm gonna layer that on there. And then I can go ahead and add my cute little duck scene there to the outside. And I love that the outside is kind of giving you a hint as to what's gonna be on the inside. So when the recipient gets it, they're gonna think it's a normal card and they're gonna open it and have this huge surprise on the inside, which is just so cool. It makes me so happy. I love playing with these. I've been joking that it's almost like my own little fidget spinner because I just keep playing with them at my desk. They're so much fun to make and I just love the awesome interactive element to it. Next up, I'm gonna be recreating an awesome card by Shari. So here I have taken out my little constellations from my Upon a Star stamp set. I put them kind of in a nice little placement that I liked, and then I'm gonna go ahead and stamp those in some Versamark ink, and I am gonna then stamp a few more little stars to kind of fill in that space. Then I'm gonna use my glow in the dark heat embossing powder, and I just love this stuff so much, it's so awesome. And so I'm gonna sprinkle that on top, and then go ahead and heat emboss these awesome stars. Next, I'm gonna create an awesome night sky a la Shari, right? Because Shari's skies are the, so awesome and I wanted to make one just like her. So I am taking my Distress Color inks and I'm putting them on in kind of three areas of kind of blobs. And it's Blueprint Sketch, Broken China, and Wilted Violet. And so you can see I'm kind of filling in the gaps with the Blueprint Sketch and I created kind of my blobs of color with that purple and then turquoise color. And all I'm gonna do is kind of go around a circle and keep building up that color. So kind of switching between each color, blue, turquoise, purple, blue, turquoise, purple. Then I'm taking some black soot distressing and going around all of the edges with it to kind of create this cool dark sky. Now, as it dried, it wasn't quite as bright as I wanted it to be. So I did something I haven't done yet and used Distress Oxide inks. So I'm using my Oxide inks on top of the Distress inks with the same colors. And you can see as I go over the stars, I'm kind of just buffing out that color on top of them to make sure they stay nice and white. And so I'm building up that color with each of those Distress Oxide inks. And it's giving it just kind of a really cool look. And so it's one of the things you can play around with. You don't have to have the Oxide inks. You can kind of play around and build up color and just have a blast with it. And so you can see I just kind of kept building it up building it up and then I don't have black soot in the distress oxide I don't even know if it's out yet but I decided to just use my normal distress inks then and kind of bring that black color back on top and you can see how cool the sky is looking and the distress oxide inks just kind of give that sky kind of a bolder look I went ahead and repeated this same technique on my little panel pieces. And I wanted to show you the comparison with the oxides and without the oxide. So it's just two different looks depending on what you're looking for. So now on this other side, I'm gonna bring those oxides in and kind of give it that same look so that everything matches. Then I'm gonna go around with that black soot distress ink again and then repeat the same thing on another panel without any stars on it. 
Here I have some noble fir cardstock and some distress oxide and broken china and cracked pistachio. And I'm gonna use these to kind of create an earth kind of look. So you can see here I'm gonna kind of blend on smooshes of color of that green color and then the blue color to kind of create different land areas on this, just kind of make it kind of abstract. So I'm bringing on the blue and then bringing on the green. And then I'm taking my fingers and then smearing that ink around so that it all kind of blends into the cardstock. And then I'm gonna repeat the same idea on some little hills for my pivot pop-up mechanism using that same noble fur cardstock. Once again, just adding the blues and the greens and then blending them out with my finger. Next, I'm gonna take some gold paint that I have and add a wet paintbrush to it with, with kind of a lot of water on it. And I'm gonna pick up some of that gold paint and then I'm gonna tap the edge of my paintbrush so that little splatters come out and kind of create these cool gold stars in this night sky. And I'm gonna do that to all of my panels. So my plain panel, my star panel, and the panels for the pop-up mechanism that we're gonna do. Then I'm taking the paintbrush and kind of dabbing in some bigger stars where I kind of thought that it needed it. Now I'm stamping some more stars from our Upon a Star stamp set and I'm gonna heat emboss these with some gold embossing powder. And then once I have those all heat embossed, I'm gonna take that same gold paint and just fill in the stars so that it kind of matches those gold splatters that we just did. Next, I've taken some outside in stitched star stackables and I'm just stamping some more images from the Upon a Star stamp set on them along with a cute sentiment which is gonna say make a wish upon a star. I'm gonna take those same dies and die cut them from that plain panel that we were working on earlier. So now we've got the kind of stitch detail on the outside and we're gonna be able to drop in those yellow stars on the inside. I'm stamping with some gold delicata ink, actually using a star from a Christmas stamp set, Trim the Tree, and I'm just stamping some extra stars all around. And then I'm gonna take that same gold paint and kind of draw some little lines coming from the stars as if they were kind of hanging. So I'm gonna draw cute little bows at the same time. I thought that was such a cute idea by Shari. So now that I've got all those there, I'm going to die cut some more stars and add those on there. Obviously, the more stars, the better in this card. Now I am stamping and heat embossing in some rose gold embossing powder, the happy from the happy, happy, happy stamp set. I'll heat emboss that and then die cut that out too. Then I'm gonna stamp onto my little earth panel piece, sending wishes, and then we'll be able to put our little happy in the middle there. I'm also gonna stamp I glow in the dark and some noble fur cardstock in the bottom so that my recipient's gonna know that those stars glow in the dark. And then now you can see how cute with that happy there. I just love it so much. Now I'm gonna take a standard size card base five and a half by four and a quarter out of some Blue Jay cardstock. And I'm gonna decorate the inside of my card. So we're gonna add those cute little stars to the back and then our earth to the bottom. And then now we're gonna take our mechanism again. So we're gonna fold along that middle line away from ourselves and then we're gonna fold along the diagonal lines towards ourselves. We're then gonna push in from behind to create that cool arrow shape. Then on those triangles, we're gonna add our nice strong adhesive. So we're gonna add that to one triangle and then flip it over and add it to the other triangle. I'm gonna take off that liner paper there on one of the triangles, and then I'm gonna go ahead and open that up, use my little viewfinder to find the center of my card, and then I'm gonna press down on that triangle. Then I'm gonna push in creating my arrow shape once again, and then I can peel off that liner tape and then close my card, push down really well, and my mechanism is all set to go. I decided at this point to decorate the front of my card before I started putting more bulk into the middle of the card. So I'm gonna lay my panel piece on and then drop those cute little yellow stars in from there. And I just love the look with the yellow and blue. I think it's so pretty. Next, we're gonna take our panel pieces and we're gonna fold towards ourselves and then fold that tab away from ourselves, fold the tab away from ourselves and then fold the panel towards ourselves. Then we're gonna add some tape there to those two little tab pieces and we're gonna fit those in together to create one long panel piece. Then I can go ahead and add my little cool earth kind of grass pieces there. And then I can decorate with some more of my cute little critters from Upon a Star. So I'm gonna add my little foxes and my cute little bunnies to this fun little galaxy scene. We'll add some adhesive to those two outer edges of our pivot mechanism. And then we're gonna take our panel piece and line that up with the center of our mechanism and push down really well to create our awesome pivot pop-up. Next, I'm gonna kind of guide that mechanism closed, close my card, and push down really, really well to make sure that I have a nice fold. 
I kept playing with it over and over again until I had a nice movement to my mechanism. Now here I am taking some acetate and I'm cutting it to quarter inch thick and then just kind of two or three inches tall. And I'm gonna do something kind of cool and that's add stuff to the top of my mechanism. And the way that we're able to do this is because we're using acetate. So I'm adding some glue dots to that acetate and then we're taping it to behind the panels. And because the acetate is flexible, when we close the card, they won't get in the way of the mechanism working, which is really cool. So there you can see how it's gonna kind of fold and move. So now I'm gonna add some more stars there there, kind of a larger star there, and then a little shooting star to the outside panel. And here you can see how cool it is. They still move because those acetate pieces bend and it's just so, so awesome. So here you can see that big surprise and now we even have the cool extra added elements of the floating stars above the panels. And this card just makes me so happy. I love it so, so much. And of course, it glows in the dark. So excuse the bad quality because I had to turn off the lights, but how cool is that? I just love it so much. So it's like quadruple interactive at this point and it's just so much fun and it just makes me smile. So I cannot wait to see what you guys create with Pivot Pop-Up. So make sure to share it with us. I know it's gonna be awesome. So thank you so much for watching today and have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.